All right. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, today is Sunday, and uh, we're just out of church not too long ago. And today I'm not visiting anybody, so <clears throat> we st we're still in church though because we have um, instrument practice going on. But I just thought to come on a quick live, and today I'm talking about important little things that matter important important little things that matter so now you are a young man you're a young woman you're, you want to get married let's start from the woman as a woman you want to get married um, first of all I'll say welcome to everybody uh, who is here uh, so as a, lo a young woman you want to get married you're trying to get married but there are some little little things even as a man that you need to take and pay attention to, I mean take into consideration or pay attention to one of those things very simply is how you look right how you look and I'm not talking about your physical outlook because that is just basic you are wonderfully and beautifully made you cannot change how you look you are just beautiful the way you are you are the best version that ever exist in this world okay your skin color no I don't say change those uh, just take care of your skin look good moisturize your skin have a good bath every day and take good care of your skin you don't have to change the color of your skin uh, before you think that you are um, marriageable or that you begin to feel that okay it's only the lighter sisters or brighter skin people that get somebody to marry no I don't believe that because my husband has said it many a times that he rather marry a darker complexioned person that's just his passion right because they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder somebody might like someone who is darker skin another might want someone who is lighter skin so your own man is coming don't change the way you look don't change your skin color you're just perfect the way you are just take care of other things for example you need to make sure that you are smelling good I have come close to many ladies who will pass by you and the smell that just goes by is not appealing okay and I think it's because many people don't know or they think that is not uh, spiritual enough to take care of yourself I know many times ago long time ago it, it used there used to be this uh, notion in in the church that people should not use deodorant I can tell you from my campus days I had an experience with one of my campus leaders who came to my campus hostel and she was looking through our things and she was like oh you use uh, deodorant why would you use deodorant why do I see all these deodorant all these um, things in your trolley and all that and I felt bad because I told her look I can't stop using deodorant because I think that a lady or any individual at all should smell good okay so why am I saying this I'm just saying that it was a time of ignorance and people didn't understand some things and they felt that using deodorant or smelling good um, maybe is worldly <laughs> maybe Christians shouldn't do that which is absolutely wrong okay it's absolutely wrong so um, take care of yourself put deodorant get a nice deodorant use deodorant shave nicely and apply your deodorant after after every bath Use a nice cream lotion if you like perfumes get a light perfume a body spray whatever it is just spray your body nicely look good that's very important okay so I'm going to be looking briefly at my I have a little book where I just want, don't want to forget what I'm saying and then the other things like the way you know some people forget to brush their teeth really nice so you need to learn how to brush your teeth make sure that you're brushing it nice cleaning your tongue nice um, brushing your teeth really nice you know brush your teeth two times in a day preferably because that's the, that's the ideal right so brush your teeth two times in a day make sure that you clean your tongue nice you know if you need a mouthwash get the mouth mouthwash wash your mouth nicely and if you notice that you have mouth odor sometimes people don't even know that they have mouth odor Okay, I have a friend who once told me that for many years she's been having mouth odor and she never knew until her daughter grew up and told her mom your mouth smells not so great and she had to ask her husband like did you notice that my mouth smells 
bad at a certain time and he's like yes but i didn't want you to feel bad well did you stop her from getting married no she is married happily married but this is a problem and it was um repelling some people because she said she noticed that some people would be like you know touching their nose when they're talking to her like they're always like touching their nose and you know trying to use their fingers to do something like this and sometimes some colleagues had offered to give her candy but she never knew because nobody thought to tell her directly that uh, maybe there's an odor in your mouth just to not f hurt her feelings right so these are some of the things that might repel some people so if you can sometimes you, it does well to just you know put your hand over your mouth and breathe in your hand like like that you kind of would sense if there is a smell that's coming out of there and you would be much more conscious to brush your teeth and maybe to have a little um tick tock in your bag or a little chewing gum or a little candy and drinking a lot of water helps so if you drink a lot of water often during the day it kind of helps if you're not fasting it's good to drink a lot of water and sometimes you can just rinse, run through the water in your mouth like, and just pour it out it helps to refresh your mouth so these are little little things that matters a lot some people can be repelled by this i want to just be very frank with you i'm going to tell you from my heart because this group this page and the youtube channel is designed to help young people to talk about things that people don't talk about or people fail to talk about or people shy away from talking about and it might be hurting some some young people and might be contributing somewhat to why they are still not married yeah we know we talk about the will of god and everything but there are some of that these small small things that we we should not neglect so take care of how you clean your mouth Okay, if you need to see the dentist, please do go go along, go and see a dentist. And if you need to get braces, it doesn't harm to get braces. Sometimes it helps to fix your denture. It helps you look good so that when you smile like me, your teeth are well placed. It kind of changes how your, your face looks, right? It's, it's a small things you know i mean it's not a, it's not a harm it, there's nothing wrong in getting those kind of things to fix how your face so that your face is just as beautiful as it's meant to be um I, i've talked about um perfumes also get the light perfume for yourself use your perfume whenever you're going out this enhances how you look how you smell matters a lot first impression lasts long we always hear them say this is saying that first impression lasts long so um the impression that you leave when you pass someone or when you sit close to somebody stays with them you know they associate you with what they what they uh, have perceived of you the first time that they met you so that's why pay attention to these little things in your best interest okay um, so I want to also talk to ladies and I will talk about color combination the way you dress matters a lot some ladies are dark in complexion like me sorry for the noise uh, there's a car just passing by some ladies are dark in complexion like me and they are fond of wearing black clothing black tops black dresses you know everything about them they just like dark colors that colors are good but they do not um, they do not fit well with your skin okay if you're dark in complexion and you're wearing a black dress all the time it will further you know darken your skin and it will not show the beauty of your skin black is beautiful ladies black is beautiful but the way you dress your black skin your darker skin your darker shade of skin matters a lot okay if you know that you're dark in complexion i will advise you as a lady go for brighter colors white is beautiful on black ladies i love white white is one of my favorite colors i can tell you i love white i love baby pink I love it. I know some people think that when they wear baby pink, that they look like a doll baby or whatever it is. <laughs> you know, you can always find something in between. You can get, you know, um, fuchsia pink or, you know, pink is always very beautiful on a, on a dark, darker shade. Okay. You can get 
other colors, bright red. The world is, look at the rainbow, look at the bright colors. Pick anything that's nice and you can always match it onto a black skirt if you love black so much. So everything like dark blue, navy blue, um, black, dark purple, dark green, and um, brown, dark brown, and this kind of dark shade of gray. Those ones are not so nice on your skin color. But if you go with all the brighter skin color, I can tell you that it will further help the brother that is praying when he see this beautifully dressed woman and God has told him she's the one. He would have to struggle and say, oh my God, she looks so dull. Her skin looks so dull. She looks this, she looks that. So I've talked about the color combination, how you combine your colors to um, when you dress up to school, to church, you know, to, I mean, to work, wherever you are, pick your colors nice according to your skin color, okay? And you need to always be neat. I can see some ladies that when you meet them in their neighborhood, they're not, you know, they're not well kept. They just dress anyhow. You don't know when you're going to find your husband. You don't know when you're going to meet your husband to be. So why do you dress shabby? Why do you tie a wrapper on your chest or just tie it, you know, just recklessly and you, you are just unkept? No, don't do that, please. Don't do that. As a young lady, you need to be well kept dress neatly no matter where you're going to you're just going down the road across the street just a block over there it doesn't matter dress well my mom will always say the way you dress is the way you will be addressed this is not a new saying people know about this you all have heard at one point in time people say to you that the way you dress is the way you'll be addressed so the way you you are being seen in this neighborhood matters a lot because your husband might just be passing by and and right there he would see this beautifully dressed bride beautiful dressed woman you know beautiful dressed damsel you know just like when Rachel went to the well <laughs> I mean she didn't know that she was gonna meet her husband right she just went there to go and do whatever it is first get to the water for the animals and there was her husband Jacob right but just imagine if she was just dressed shabbily and, you know, haphazardly and not well kept. I mean, even if just, even if Jacob would have married her, maybe it would have contributed in delaying when she, she would get married, right? So these are small things that, please, I'm, 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 I'm noting them. I hope that you have a pen and a paper and that you're writing these things down. They're very important. Be neat, dress neat. You're going to Bible study in the evening. It's evening church. It's worker smithing. It's uh, choir practice. It's just going across the road to the market. You're just going to the store to buy something. Wherever you're going, dress neatly. Okay? Take care of your hair. If you cannot make your hair, make sure that you can just, you know, pack it, put it in a bun. You know, make it look neat. Always, always make sure that you are looking decent and presentable okay also another thing is it doesn't matter how many dresses that you have some people will think that oh yeah i don't have too many things i am um, you know i don't have so many clothings no it doesn't matter how many dresses that you have it just matters on how you maintain what you have make sure that you press your dress even if you have just five nice dresses as long as they are clean and you dress combine them nicely and they are well decent clean ironed pressed you will look well you will look good people might even notice that you don't have too many but they will know that this person always looks good and you know of course i'm talking to the ladies i'm going to talk to the men very soon uh, apart from your the way the number of dresses um i said that you should pick your colors well pick your dresses well according to your size your shape some ladies believe that because a dress looks good on another person, uh, they liked it, that is enough for them to just go and buy that dress. No. Every dress does not look the same on every lady. Okay? If you have, you know, there are different shapes, right? There's some people say there's the lion shape, there's the eight shape, there is, I mean, I don't know the other, the other ones, but there are different shapes. Some people are broader on the chest, and some people are just like, you know, broad on the chest and broad in their in their hip level and their their waist is really tiny and any dress can look good on them okay any dress whatever they put on they look good on it because your friend looks good on that dress doesn't mean that you should go and get the same dress try the dress on if it doesn't look good on you my sister no matter how beautiful it looks do not buy it wear what fits your shape 
That's how to enhance yourself as a lady. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little secret. When my husband was led to me, yes, but when he saw me, I, I'm always conscious of how I look, how I appear. And when he saw me, I was on a white dress and I was like, wow, who is this lady? Wow, I've never, I don't know her, but wow, who is she? He wanted to know more. Of course, God led him to me at the end of the day and, you know, we, we are married today, but just imagine I was just shabby, you know, just dressed anyhow and, you know, in a very funny shape. You know, some ladies, they don't have the hip. But they want to wear fitted dresses, fitted skirts. But they don't have they don't have hips. It doesn't look good on you. Let me tell you, sometimes I, I drive and I look through ladies and I look at them. I'm like, who is not advising this lady right? Why are you wearing this fitted dress? You don't have the body to carry this. Don't show it. It doesn't look good. You can wear something else and you look good in your slim silhouette. You look beautiful. You look take away. So please pay attention to this thing. So if you know that you don't have the hips, you don't have the back, you don't have the, you know, the, the buttocks and you, you can wear very nice flay dress, you know, A-line dress. There are other nice dresses that will look, that will look good on a slim lady. Nice suits that will look good according to your shape. If you are so broad here, there's some kind of suit that you shouldn't wear. Because when you wear those kind of suits, you just spoil it. You just, you, no, mm -mm. please. I'm giving you these. Some people, maybe nobody has told you that. Keep that in your purse, in your little purse of secrets of, <laughs> and learn these things. Get a long mirror. Present yourself in front of your, um, a glass where you can see yourself fully and pay attention to the kind of dress that you wear. Okay, that being said, I'm going to say that I'm going to go to attitude, your language, the way you talk. As a lady, you are still single and you are so rude. You talk to people anyhow. Someone once said something. He went, he was going for, he was going, he, he's a music teacher, okay? So he was sharing a, a story with my husband. And so he was going to a school. He was invited to a school by a principal to come and help select an employee who is going to teach music, like an assistant music teacher. And so for some reason, he couldn't go with his car, whatever it is, he took public transport. In the public transport, there was this young man who talked him down and he, the person was so mean. He talked him down so bad, not knowing that this person was going for this job application. And when he got to that school, he saw this guy that he has talked so bad too he has yelled at him he has you know looked down at him he has called him names and he got there and this was the person that was going to interview him it was embarrassing he felt embarrassed he felt so his bad character had an effect on him getting the job because this man had gotten to the school while he was waiting, he was talking with the principal and said, oh, sorry, I came late because I was this person that talked so bad to me. I had to get down from the bus and had to wait for another bus. Just for them to get into the classroom, the interview, um, the interview um, room or the office room and to find that same person who had talked so bad to him. You see, he, he kind of destroyed his chances of getting a job and the principal was like no 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 if this is a person that talked so bad to you this is not the kind of person we want in our school you see because of the way he talked he felt bad he felt small but that's his character character doesn't hide you know so work on your character work on how you talk to people no matter how annoyed you are it's not decent as a lady to start to yell and to shout and to use the F word and to talk to people anyhow and to show that you know how to talk. Yes, you know how to talk. You know it all. You know this. You, no, 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 no. You don't need that. Sometimes it's good to keep quiet. Even if you are right and this person that is talking to you is wrong, it's good to keep quiet. Sometimes just keep quiet. Take the wrong. Take the insult. Take however you are treated. Even you don't have to always defend yourself you don't have to always be right I've been saying this over and over again that it's always good to mind how you speak mind how you speak you remember people have mentioned Veshta a lot okay they said that Esther became queen because of how Vesh Veshta behaved yeah somewhat people analyze it in different way but maybe the way she behaved yes the reason why her husband was calling her was not very right because he was drunk yes but the way she behaved could have had somewhat of an 
an effect on her marriage. So the way you talk and speak in public could also maybe a contributing factor and the reason why you are still unmarried and why somebody might have wanted to marry you and the way you talk was a big put off and the person was like no if it's this person that that you god you want me to marry no 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 i don't think i want to marry this person i want to pray again and the person might end up marrying you but maybe with a lot of struggle and might take many more years maybe the person would have married you maybe your marriage date would have been closer if you had kept your mouth shut if you had mind how you speak and you have been careful of your language your choice of word when you are annoyed when you're upset do not talk do not say anything and learn not to look down on people as a lady no matter how beautiful you are learn not to look down on people learn not to talk down on people learn not to size a man based on the way he appears because some men it will surprise you there are some men that are really doing well but he just don't know how to dress. And God would have placed you in his life to dress him up, to teach him how to dress. But because of the way you talk, you spoke so bad to him, not knowing that this man is actually a big man. This man is actually the person that would have changed your life and turned your life around. But because of the way you talk, you lost it. You lost him. You lost your future husband, your soulmate. Be careful the way you talk. Don't look down on people. Don't be condescending. Don't be, you know, don't be, don't be, don't talk down on people. Be very careful with that. I've noticed it online. Even online, you see some ladies, the way they talk, oh my God. You're like, oh my God, is this a Christian? Like, why are you talking like this? Why, what, what, whatever it is. You don't know these people online. I don't know people online. I don't, I don't know you guys personally, right? I don't know who God has placed here to be my helper. So you don't know people online. You don't know who is behind the keyboard. Do not just talk to people, no matter how provoked you are, no matter the, the heated discussion and conversation that is going on. Try to be cautious. Try to be careful. Cut, courtesy is very important for a lady. It's part of femininity. You want to be feminine? Learn to talk like a lady. A lady minds how she speaks. Okay? Pay attention to how you write, how you respond to people. You know, even when people are pissing you off, there are always, there are always decent ways to uh, tell people off without being dismissive, okay? Um, so, um, also, don't be this kind of lady. I'm going to share a story with you. There was a time before I got married, there's this guy that took me out. I mean, we're all singles, right? He was, I mean, I used to call them fishermen then. He's, he was looking for a wife, right? He was looking for somebody, a, a, an ideal girl. And he took me out. He said, hey, I'm going to take you out. I'm coming to take you out. Let's just go and talk and everything. And we went to a mall, you know, and he, he, we went to this big mall. Um, and he told me, you, hey, you, you want to pick anything? Is there something you like? Would you like to pick? And all that. But I've learned a long time ago, I have a very, a very strict mother who has told us a lot of lessons even before we became ladies I mean marriageable and one of those lessons is be careful what you collect give the gifts you collect from men the kind of gifts you collect from men because <laughs> you might collect a gift that will become um, a hook in your throat you won't be able to say no you won't be able to stand your ground because you collected a gift that has held you on like a hook so we went out he saw he took me to the perfume area i said hey is there a perfume you'd like and i was like ah oh, no i don't really need no you can take anything you want and i was like ah oh, no 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 so he insisted yeah you want anything is there is there a top you like is he took me to many many aisles okay i looked around and i eventually with much persuasion i just took a body mist not too expensive a very simple body mist that even if I'm called upon to pay back, I'll be able to pay without, without blinking. And when I came back to my room, guys, this is a shocker. I had roommates at the time. And they were like, hey, 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 where did you guys go? Ah, that guy, you know that guy, you know, he's boxed up. He has money. Ah, I heard that he took you here. And what did you, what did you get? Let's see, let's see. What do you have? What do you have? I was like, I just took a mist. And they were like, what? This guy, this guy had dollars. And why, why can't, why didn't you just like... Oh my God, he's taking you out. He was ready for you. You should have taken everything. You should have taken this. You should have bought this for us. You should have brought that for us. You should have. I'm like, no, no, no. I, I don't believe in that. And that's not because I wanted to impress him. I didn't marry him. He's not my, I mean, he was just a guy, like a friend. 
why should I get greedy and start picking, 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 picking? And then, so if he proposes to me, I'll be struggling. I wouldn't even be able to pray because, um, yeah, there's a bee here. I wouldn't be able to pray because the gifts will be clouding my mind. Okay? But because I took that very simple thing, even though he was giving me signals that he liked me, I needed to have a clear mind to pray. Okay? I was able to pray freely because I had not taken anything from him that would sound as like an idol or a cloud in my mind or such a big gift that I, I feel um, indebted to him. I didn't feel indebted to him. Okay? So as a lady, when you, a guy calls you to go out, first, a rule of thumb is have your money in your hand. If you're going to have dinner with a man or a friend or, you know, an acquaintance, a guy that you think is a suitor, have your money in your pocket. In case things turn around anyhow, you wouldn't be embarrassed in the restaurant. You wouldn't be embarrassed outside. You have your money to be able to come back home. You'd have your money to be able to pay and eat decently. Eat what you can afford so that if you have to pay for it, you would pay, you'd be able to pay for it. You know, when we, you know, some of us that, that are living here, out here in the Western world, especially here in Canada, when friends invite you and say, hey, let's go for lunch, guys. When you go for lunch with friends and colleagues, always have your money. They invited you to go for long, lunch, but you'll take food, you'll eat. But at the end of the day, when the, uh, the waiter brings the, the, the receipts, everybody pays for their lunch. Trust me. Everybody pays for their lunch. They say there's no free lunch in Canada. So always make sure that. The, the lesson is just that. Always make sure that you have your money. And don't ever be uh, go out with anybody with the mindset or with the, with the idea that they're going to pay my lunch for me. Don't, don't always expect that. Okay. Now we're going to go to the men. The men also need to look good. Okay. Men also need to use deodorant because men have a stronger smell. Okay let's be factual men have some you know just because of the masculine you know there's this masculine uh, aura you know so of course i have brothers and i have i had a father so i know how men have a strong smell so as a man you need deodorant as a woman i wouldn't be attracted to a man even if it's the will of god for me and he comes and he's smelling that oof, oof, i would i would want to you know I, I might struggle okay i might struggle with with that so as a woman, I want a man to smell good. Yes. So men need to smell good. Men also need to take care of how they look. You know, there is this thing about some. The modern Dipala brothers or young men are, are better. The older ones used to wear very, very big pants. <laughs> and I used to mock them. I used to say the wind blows with their pants. So it used to look funny, you know, right? And it doesn't really make them look very, very nice because they are very slim and they are wearing very big pants. It's not a baggy. It's just that the pant is too big. And it doesn't really go look good on them. So pay attention to those things. Make sure that you wear a pant that fits you so that you don't have to uh, use the belt and you know how they put the belt and you see the, some side of the belt coming out and then it looks funny. And the way they wear the tie, they, they, they put it on top of the tuck it, tuck in the shirt and it looks funny and they don't look very decent because the, the clothes is actually oversized you know that's not good so as a man also you need perfume there are masculine perfume nice perfumes that you can use and smell good you can use those perfume just lightly use it smell good bro smell good Th these things matters a lot and you're wondering why sisters are saying no to you and you are always shabby you're always unkept you don't clean yourself up. I'm not saying that you should shave everything. Some women actually like men that shave, you know, nice shave, you know, really nice, handsome looking, you know. But if you're going to the marriage committee, you wouldn't go there with a lot of barb. <laughs> you might have a problem at the marriage committee. So you want to be careful with that. You want to be careful to shave and look a little bit decent like you're going for an interview. How you will go for an interview when you're going to the marriage committee please my brothers i've many brothers have complained that they went to the marriage committee and they sent them away and told them that they need to go and shave and you know in our church okay it's our church we know our church so if you're going to the marriage committee please pay attention to shave and look nice okay as a man to wear nice shirts wear beautiful shirts and press your shirt brothers Please press your shirt. Don't just dress up and say, don't worry, it's going to get straightened as I go. Please, brothers, please, please, I beg you. Dress nice. Women look at these things. Another thing that women look at, brothers, I want to, I want to tell you a secret. I did it, okay? I always look at shoes. <laughs> brothers' shoes, I look at it, I know. Okay, so women look at, look at men's shoes. 
So pay attention to your shoes. Uh, you cannot go and wear trainers on a suit, okay? There are other ways to dress. You can dress nice with the trainers, yes, but it has to be like a suit on a jeans pant. Then you can wear a kind of, there's a kind of trainers that will go with a jeans pant and a suit on it. You look nice, okay? So brothers, it doesn't matter how much you have, it doesn't matter how much you earn, the way you look matters a lot. Dress nice, okay? You don't have to have an expensive car, you don't have to have an, a very, very, very um, high paid job to look good. You can budget well, wear what fits you, dress it nice, iron your shirt, cut your hair nice, brush your hair, look good, use your perfume, and you're good, okay? And the way you talk also as a brother matters a lot. Please, brothers, mind how you talk to women. I know this thing among uh, the Yorubas, they, they have this term, they always say this thing, oh, um, just a woman, just a common woman. I, my Yoruba is bad, okay? My Yoruba is bad, so I wouldn't say that. They would say, lasso, lasso, something like that. Like, just a woman, just a common woman. Don't, don't use those kind of words. There are some women that those kind of things like hits them differently. They feel that you, are, you, you, you look down on them or that you don't think that they are, they are any important and that maybe they are objects. So pay attention, be careful of how you speak. Be careful with your choice of words. Women nowadays are different from women back before. The, the modern women are more self-conscious. They're conscious of how you talk to them, how you address them, how you respond to them, how you, you know, behave around them. Women take care of these things. So you as a woman, you need to, you as a man, you need to uh, pay attention to that. Hello. Yeah, so pay attention to that. Apart from that, um, um, sorry for the noise. So apart from that, you also need to pay attention to uh, your, um, sorry, I'm a little bit distracted. I'm coming out of church. So we're, go we're getting ready to go home now. So another thing that you need to pay attention to also is um, selfishness. Okay, I've noticed this among a lot of young men. They don't want to spend their money. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to spend their money <laughs> guys i don't know how you you're going to do it why would why would you want to spend it's expensive a woman it's expensive get ready to spend once a woman notices that you are stingy that you are really stingy she would have doubts about you trust me i have brothers i have five brothers and i tell them this some of you guys that are very stingy, you don't want to spend your money. You don't want anybody to, to, to eat your money. You're always like, no, 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 I don't want to spend my money. Oh, no, 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 no. I need a woman that has more money. There's this thing among men now. They're like, oh, I need a woman that has more money. I don't mind a woman to have more money than me. Oh, really? Guys, if you want to be in control of that home, you need to have your money. You need to have your money. And I'm not saying this. If you have a job right now, I pray for you that God will help you to have a better job, to have other means of income, other streams of income. Okay? So, don't let anything stop you from being the um, nice, take care of his woman. Okay? Don't stop yourself. You can take care of her with the little things that you have you can actually take care of her bye yeah so you can actually take care of her no matter how little your resources are but you have to have a willing heart there are some people that they have a little and the way they give you of their little you know that this person has a heart that wants to give so people look at your motive your intention you know someone that is selfish they, you can't hide for too long it's just obvious because the way you behave, you know, you don't want to spend. And the woman is watching you. Even women that have, they still want their man to take care of them. Every woman wants her man to take care of her, me inclusive. Okay, I have a job, but it's always happy. It makes me happy when my husband spends money on me, then gets me a flower, a gift. Oh, it's always good. That's, that's just the woman in me, right? So as a man, please, if you are stingy, work on it. Work on it. You need to work on that stinginess. Be nice. Try to give. No matter how little it is, give it and present it well. And tell him, tell her that, okay, I don't have so much, but this is what I have and I thought to give you this. I thought to just share this with you. And when you go out and you are taking transport because you know that she's a medical doctor, doesn't mean that because she's a medical doctor, you're waiting for her to pay your transport fare for you. No, brother, don't do that. But if the woman notices that even though you know she has more money than you, you are always willing to jump 
to want to be the one to pay. You want to be the man all the time. These are little, little things that matters, my brothers. So I'm so happy to see all of you guys who have joined me today. Um, I want to come to a close with this live. So I hope you've learned something. If you learned something, please don't forget to like. Give me a like. Give me a love. Give me, you know, comments. Let us know if these are topics that you want to, um, to have. So this is from my own uh, little uh, experience and knowledge. I'm sharing this from my heart to you. You know, I love you and I want you guys to have a happy home, a Christian home, you know, a home of peace. I want you to get married on time. If you're still, you're still there, you have not married, you're 36 already. I am praying for you. I want you to get married. You are 37. You are 30. You're 27. Yeah, I want you to get married. Um, but you need to pay attention to these little, little things. Okay? You really need to pay attention to this. Thank you. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you. I also appreciate you. I appreciate you hanging on with, hanging up, hanging here with me and, uh, you know, staying on until the end of this live. I'm coming to the end of this live because I have to go. My family is ready to go now. Don't forget to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have many videos there. We have podcasts. We have discussions. We have lots of things going on there. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, share it with your friends and put your comment. Let us know the topics you want us to be discussing and don't forget to be a big brother, a big sister on the group and on the page. In your responses, no matter how bad people talk to you, do not respond back in a denigrating way. Speak words of grace, speak words of compassion, speak law, words like Jesus would have, you know, graceful word loving word christian words full of faith you know don't tell anybody off but speak words of grace and god will continue to bless you god will open doors for you this week this week is a week to go and crush it go and crush it go and make it share a testimony and don't be afraid if you have seen somebody if you've seen a brother a sister please don't hesitate to go to the marriage committee quickly go and propose don't be scared go and propose you never know that sister that is very serious and very classy might just say yes to you you never know brother you never know sister that person that you think oh no i don't think he might marry me i don't think she might marry me oh if god is telling you to marry her go to the marriage committee go and do your part and wait and see god work on your behalf okay that being said i'm going to put a, an end to this live and i'll say have a good end of the day and have a great time um, Great week ahead. God bless you and au revoir. Ciao. See you.